Hi, this is Kevin Chesso with the University of Wisconsin Madison's Division of Extension, and I'm out in our teaching and display garden here at the Spooner Ag Research Station. It's the uh, middle of July, and I just want to give everybody a little walkthrough tour of our display garden so you can see how beautiful our plants are looking and invite you all to stop by and take a look. The garden is open to the public off of Orchard Lane. We've got a beautiful display banner at the intersection of Highway 70 and Orchard Lane, so stop on out and uh, see what our plants look like in person. And if not, I hope this little video tour uh, gives you a flavor of what we're doing out here. Thank you. This is the south end of our garden. This is kind of our main entrance into our monarch and pollinator sanctuary garden. So there's eight perennial beds in this space and there's walking paths that go in between them all and each bed features different perennial plants that are suitable for pollinators and specifically uh, the monarch butterfly. So we are an official monarch way station here and you can see we've got various plants in bloom right now and it's been really dry and because of that some plants are doing a little better than others. We do not have irrigation in this space and right now we're about six inches behind in total rainfall for the growing season. We exit the monarch and pollinator sanctuary space we enter into what we've always called our pinwheel garden and this has got eight beds as well and these are typically planted to annual flowers and vegetables we're an official all america selections display garden so you can see some of these plants are starting to fill in nicely our master gardener volunteers are busy with their management, maintenance, weeding, deadheading, and things are looking pretty good. Again, we're out here watering almost every single day. We had about two tenths of an inch recently, so, but you can see the grass is not bright green because of the lack of moisture. So these are the eight different beds and again we're featuring all america selections winners in um, many of our beds here at the teaching and display garden both vegetables and ornamentals some beautiful pak choy Okra. So this again is our pinwheel garden, which is the second bed you walk through as you go to the south. As we transition, we go into our, we've always called our children's garden area. And you can see there's various raised beds here. <clears throat> so lots of options to do different kinds of plantings and have some fun with small space gardening, square foot gardening, containers. Here's an example of a container. Again, there's our All-America Selection winner, Solotia, that's put into this container. The next area we're going to be walking through is our sensory garden. This is a new addition this year. And again, we have our master gardeners who are attending to this and we're um, very happy that they're here helping us. So this whole area has plants designed for taste, touch, smell, feel, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I 
You want to say hi, Roseanne? Hey, hi there, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for being out here. <laughs> so now we're transitioning to uh, more vegetables and a little bit different layout here. But we've got rectangular beds with walking paths. So these are some peppers that are getting started here. We're trying to use mulches and uh, more sustainable uh, gardening practices. So this bed is one of our no-till beds where we just planted directly into last year's straw mulch. This is a bed that has been planted to mostly tomatoes and peppers, but we're utilizing uh, some green chop alfalfa material that is coming from the research station, which is another nice organic mulch source to have. This is kind of our center bed combination of flowers and vegetables some tomatoes and these are actually some um, unusual varieties that were gifted to us and we're growing them out and just seeing what they look like and how well they do here's another one of our what we call no-till or minimal till beds um, we've got vine crops in here uh, this will probably get mulched a little bit more we also like to utilize these cattle panels for arbors. So we've got climbing pole beans on either side. And they're a little late in getting started, but hopefully they'll fill that arbor in the next couple weeks. This is uh, an entire bed of All America Selections watermelon. So this variety here is called Golden Gold. And here we utilized some alfalfa mulch. This was a, a big hay bale that had broken twines and they couldn't move it off the field very well. So they delivered it here for us to use as mulch. So big fan of using organic mulches to cover the soil and smother the weeds so that once you get it weeded and mulched, you're done. So this is a bed of uh, pumpkins. I think there's some zucchini squash. And this is an area that uh, got renovated this year. So this was all rototilled up a month and a half ago. And we're going to be reestablishing some turf in here. Uh, but we also have two beds that run east and west here. So that's a, a bed of um, squash, winter squash. Again, we're still in the process of getting that weeded. This will be planted to grass. So we have a nice grass walkway here. And this row is planted to melons. And there you can see that alfalfa hay mulch that will be spread out um, and we got more of that, but this is how we're gonna compete with weeds. Spread that around. Again, always work to do, but we're making progress. And then the last part of the garden, which is a little bit new for us this year, is uh, we used to have a, a row of perennial fruit crops in here, um, but we are in a challenging location to grow fruit trees. This is wide open. And the wind in the winter really is hard on our plants. You could say the same thing with our row of uh, two rows of grapes. Um, we had really tough winter this past year. We had a lot of winter winter injury, and uh, we're trying to retrain new trunks with the suckers. But the deer have been in here, unfortunately, helping keep them pruned. So the grapes are not looking so good. But this is our row of what we call just donation plants. So these are extra plants we had. Um, they're under drip irrigation and they're in the process of being trellised. So we're using this twine and fence post and weaving the twine around the plants to support them. Because anybody who grows tomatoes know that if you don't, especially the vining types, uh, they can become real mess and flop all over if you're not trellising them. So now I'm heading back uh, to kind of where we started, making a full circle. 
Here's our hops. Again, this is strictly demonstration. Uh, hops has become kind of a, a new thing lately. We've got, I think, 18 foot uh, trellis wire all the way to the top. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little walkthrough of our teaching and display garden here at the Spooner Egg Research Station. Just as a reminder, the garden is open to the public. It's off Orchard Lane, which is um, just north of Highway 70 in Spooner, Wisconsin. And it's just uh, self-guided tours. You just pull off the road and park in the grassy area alongside the trees and just walk into our display garden and enjoy it. So again, it's Kevin. Chesso with University of Wisconsin-Madison's Division of Extension and thanks for coming along for the tour. Mm -hmm.